Well, hello world. It's been a little while, so this is probably going to make up for some of it. I want to talk about Winget. Now, Winget is a package management tool that's been part of Windows 10 from build 1709 onwards. And it allows you to do this incredible thing about installing packages. Now, this is something that we've talked about before with Chocolatey and other package management tools, but this one's a little bit unique because it's part of Windows, or at least can be, directly. So as an example, if I run a winget and upgrade and then the package, so in this case, I'm going to upgrade my Docker desktop, you'll see that it happily installs the latest version based on what I've requested. Now, that's not to say that I couldn't update other packages as well. It's just that that's the one I picked in this particular case. So let's look at a different example. Instead of just updating one package, what happens if I want to update multiple packages and effectively use it as a package management tool? Because it is or can be a very nice package management tool. And there's, there's a couple of things I want to cover with this. One of them is you can install packages without admin every time. Now, that's not technically true for every package because it is mentioned in the documentation that it's package to package, but we'll cover that a little bit later. But for the moment, we've gone ahead and we've updated our Docker desktop. So what if we want to update multiple packages or all of the packages to the latest version, as an example? So it's actually quite simple. We will do another one here where we say, okay, we'll do a win get and we'll do an upgrade and we're going to add a couple of different parameters. So in this case, um, we're not entering a version because we're going for all of the packages and they all have different versions. So we just do a slash slash all. And what it's going to do is run through the remaining packages that haven't been updated and go ahead and update those. Now, obviously this can take a, a little bit of time. So through the magic of video editing, we're going to speed it up to about 600 times regular speed. So we don't sit here for about 20 minutes watching my screen. Now, one of the things that we haven't covered is how do we get this and what are the requirements? And depending on what you've done with your version of Windows, you might be able to open command prompt right now and just type in winget and happily use it. So let's start with an absolutely blank Windows install and work from there. So we're going to flip over to a, a brand new VM. Now on that brand new VM, all I really need to do is install this uh, app installer. This effectively allows me to then run Winget because it's it's installing Winget. So that is pretty much the only requirement. Now, there is obviously a couple of things that are a requirement to this. One of them being that you need to install this as admin because you can't do it as a regular user. And the other part being that quite often after this is installed or some of its dependencies can result in you needing to do a reboot. So as an example here, um, we can say, okay, I am currently installed as the admin. I've installed it as that. And if I type win get, I can very much happily get a response. You know, command line tool is registered. Awesome. But if I flip over to another user, so I'm just going to prove here that I have my Joe Smith user for a second and that Joe Smith is not part of the admin group, unlike my current user. So Joe Smith, you can see, is just a user. So we're going to sign in as Joe Smith. So that terribly long thing of switching users. And once we sign in as Joe Smith, what we're going to do is fire up the command prompt again. And this is a lot like chocolatey in this respect, in terms of you, you'll often find that when you do a chocolatey install, if you don't do a reboot afterwards, the chocolatey prompt is not available to all of the users. It's just available to the one that you did the install as. So here is an example with my Joe Smith. If I do a, who am I? Just confirming I am Joe Smith. Hopefully you trust that I logged in as Joe Smith as well, but hey. And if I do a winget, as you can see, winget doesn't really give me any response. It's an unknown term. And you can see that I've got kind of like pending install updates. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reboot the machine so that we can get up to speed and continue with our demo here. So this is a reboot later. So again, through the magic of video editing. And we're now going to go ahead and go to the command prompt once more. And in this case, you know, PowerShell command prompt. Obviously it's my preferred at this point. And I do winget 
and you should be able to see we get a response. So I've got the option to do install. So okay, let's let's do something. This is a relatively blank machine at this point. So I will search for a package that I want to install. I'm going to search for a SQL packages, you know, common thing for me. It's going to tell me you've never run this before. Do you agree? I go, yes, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to say, okay, I want Azure Data Studio. Why not? That seems like a pretty reasonable package for me to be using. So I do a, a nice win get dash install and name of package. So I can use the quotation marks in order to use the full package name and it goes ahead and it runs the install and we're going to run i'm actually going to leave it at the default speed because at this point it'll give me a chance to kind of elaborate a little bit more but this is dependent on a couple of things one of which is the package itself because some require admin and some don't this one doesn't so you can see i'm the installs running and i'm still signed in as joe smith and just to double check joe smith currently has only user permissions so this package is able to install while I'm not an admin, which is great. But this doesn't apply to all packages, unfortunately. So while this one works perfectly fine, if we do a random sample of something else, we'll show the alternative scenario. So in this case, let's say, you know what, I'm going to go search, but um, instead of searching for SQL, let's do a search for probably the most commonly used browser in the world. I say Chrome. Sorry, Microsoft, it's just not ish. So this is going to turn back and give me a couple of different versions. So there's a few search findings, same as you, you'll get chocolate tea, we'll find a few search findings. And I'm going to say, okay, install me Google Chrome. So I do a winget install, again, using quotation marks, install Google Chrome. So that's going to get me the 97.0 release at this point. Obviously, it could be later, depending on when you're watching this video. And it's going to go ahead and try and do that install. And you see the install runs again. But this time, I'm being prompted for the admin password as the admin user. So this is one of those examples whereby it depends on the package. So whilst this is a lovely program, for being able to install software and the rest, you may still need to sync down to the admin level in order to do the install. But if you want to give users the ability to update their packages and potentially install some of those packages without you needing to do all the package management or maintain the package repository, this is actually kind of a cool tool because the only requirement you've really got infrastructure wise is make sure that app installer is installed and that you have an internet connection. And that's it. Obviously, depending on the package, you may need to then hop onto the user's machine and input the password so they can do an install. But realistically, that's probably a lot easier than maintaining your own infrastructure. So up to you.